Hello, my name is Sachita Nishal and I'm a third year PhD student at Northwestern University. Today, I'll be talking about how researchers can use crowd ratings to put predictive models of newsworthiness to support science journalism. This is joint work conducted with Dr. Nick Diakopoulos at the Computational Journalism Lab at Northwestern School of Communication. In this work, we specifically propose a computational technique to support news discovery, which is a journalist's first task. News discovery occurs when a journalist first learns about a potentially newsworthy event or development. We say potentially because coming after coming across some information, a journalist will then vet it to see if they should develop it further or not. So how is it that journalists decide newsworthiness? How do they vet a story? There's a specific set of factors known as news values that impact journalist decisions. These are cultural, organizational, and sociological factors. For instance, these could be related to the controversy, the social impact, the surprise, or the relevance of a given story. This is a non-exhaustive list, and often the news values that journalists use are highly contextual and highly variable. In this work, we specifically look at science journalism, and so we specifically think about how news values might apply to articles from the archive preprint server. In the screenshot, you can see how the archive preprint server looks like, specifically for the computer science subcategory, which is what we examine as well. This is an online repository where scientists make their research available for free, often before it comes out in peer review. And so the archive server is a valuable resource for science journalists, especially those who are looking to break some cutting-edge science to the general public. But they also face many obstacles as they try to vet this and other resources for newsworthy leads. Now I'll briefly summarize the modern challenges to news discovery that journalists face. So for one, they encountered certain time pressures. This is because journalists today have taken on a variety of roles in society. They are curators, civic educators, public intellectuals, and so on. While this move towards more independent inquiry is a net positive for society, it also means that journalists are now sifting through a dizzying array of information as they do their job. Moreover, the volume of scientific output itself has exploded over the last few years. Recent studies show that the number of scientific articles published annually actually increases exponentially. However, an increasing amount of scientific research is just not making it beyond the scientific community. It's not coming into the news. Here's a visual display of how the archive monthly submissions have skyrocketed over the last few decades. On the y-axis, you can see the number of submissions, whereas on the x-axis, you can actually see the month of the year. So March 2022 saw on roughly 17,000 papers uploaded just to the archive server. This is a lot of information for any journalist to go through. And so then in the context of these upheavals, we ask the question, how can we support science journalists as they navigate all this information and sift through it for newsworthy leads? In order to do this, we look at two key areas of work that have sought to assist journalists with different tasks in the news development pipeline. The first is the idea of computational news discovery, which is defined as the use of algorithms to orient editorial attention to potentially newsworthy events or information before publication. The second methodological area that we look at is the use of crowdsourcing for journalism, which means using insights from crowd workers to support journalistic decision making at very many different stages. So we borrow from and build on the prior research in both of these domains, and we try to design a system where we collect crowdsourced ratings of news values for individual archive articles, and we use those ratings to train a predictive model for newsworthiness. As we do this, the first research question we ask is, to what extent do crowd workers and journalist ratings of newsworthiness for scientific articles actually align? To understand this question, we first try and understand how it is that experts decide newsworthiness for science articles. So we first created a survey where we asked journalists to rate how interesting an archive article could be for their reporting. We call this rating the expert newsworthiness. This was essentially collected on a five-point Likert scale for individual expert journalists. We also asked journalists to textually justify their ratings, and we conducted a thematic analysis on the text of their justifications. Using our thematic analysis, we uncovered three main themes that drive journalists' assessments of newsworthiness. The first theme relates to research characteristics, that is the intrinsic aspects of every article itself, such as how controversial it may be, how surprising it may be, etc. The second key theme is about story actualization, that is the logistical and editorial considerations that are involved in writing or framing a story. Finally, the third theme relates to story reception, which are the editorial considerations that are involved in marketing and publicizing a story. Based on these three themes, as well as the news values literature that I've alluded to in the past, we identify four news values that we believe crowd workers can reasonably evaluate a scientific article for. These are the actuality or the timeliness, the controversy, the magnitude of impact, as well as the valence of impact. For each of these news values, we once again collect five-point Likert scale ratings from our crowd workers. 
we sum these individual ratings in order to obtain a measure of crowd newsworthiness for individual archive articles. We then conduct a series of correlation analyses to measure how well the crowd newsworthiness and the export newsworthiness actually align. This figure shows the results of the correlation analysis. I am going to point out to the two key takeaways that this figure implies. The first takeaway is that the crowd newsworthiness and the export newsworthiness, as seen in the bottom right corner of this heat map, are actually correlated statistically significantly and also moderately positively. This points to the fact that the crowd worker ratings might actually have a viable signal for the newsworthiness as experts think about it. The second key takeaway is that experts think differently about different news values. And so, the crowd worker ratings of different news values actually are correlated differently to those of the individual experts. For instance, actuality, as seen in the first row of this heat map, is correlated much more strongly to the ratings of expert 2 than it is to the ratings of expert 1. Similarly, impact magnitude is correlated much more strongly to the ratings of expert 1 than it is to the ratings of expert 2. However, in both of those cases, it is correlated moderately well and statistically significantly to the average ratings of both of the experts. Based on these insights, we then design a predictive model for newsworthiness that is going to be trained on the crowd ratings of newsworthiness. We then, see, we then set out to answer the second research question, which is, to what extent can a machine learning model predict journalist ratings of newsworthiness? To build the predictive model to answer this question, we pick up individual articles from archive and use those to generate a set of features for the model. There are two main kinds of features. The first kind of features pertains to the article metadata itself, such as the primary category of the article, whether it makes any code freely available, etc. The second kind of feature relates to the text of the article itself, which we convert into sentence word embeddings. We use both of these features and feed them into a random forest model and conduct iterative parameter testing to find out what the best set of hyperparameters are for this model. Ultimately, the model then outputs an individual predicted newsworthiness for each archive article that gets input in. Following the calculation of this predicted newsworthiness, we now attempt to calculate how useful it might be as a proxy for the export newsworthiness itself. We also conduct this evaluation in comparison to the crowd newsworthiness. To this end, we use a metric known as precision at k, which for the top k ranked items based on a given metric evaluates the precision. So for instance, the precision at k for k equals 10 is 0 0.8 for the predicted newsworthiness ratings. What this means is that for the top 10 ranked articles, as per the model's predicted newsworthiness, 80% of those are actually newsworthy as per the experts themselves. In contrast, this is only a 0.6 for the crowd ratings. In fact, the table shows that the predicted model shows a better or as good precision at k for all values of k that we test for in comparison to the crowd ratings. Based on the results of this predictive model, as well as the results of research question one, we now present a set of takeaways as well as the points for future discussion. The first main point here is that experts and crowd workers ratings are visibly correlated, but at the same time, they are also sensitive to different themes, as we saw. This will definitely impact the models that we can build. So the machine learning models that we show do present promise as a scalable and cost-effective proxy for expert responses, but they also do have very specific blind spots. For instance, they cannot predict certain aspects of newsworthiness that are related to story actualization or story reception, simply because crowd workers do not have the domain expertise to evaluate articles for those criteria. Finally, what this means is that we need to conduct large-scale model deployments and evaluations to measure the true utility of these models. What is the value of the model's capabilities as they exist? However, we hope this work sets the stage for future evaluation of computational news discovery tools for supporting science journalists. Please get in touch if you have any ideas or suggestions or any feedback. Thank you.